Hey guys, my name is Jamin. This is my channel PC Monkey, where I try to bring you a wide variety of do-it-yourself computer repair and upgrade videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to address a computer that has no signs of life, uh, or maybe perhaps very little signs of life, but in any case, it's not turning on. Couple quick things before we get started. First, please remember to like, share, subscribe if this video is helpful. If you do want to support the channel a little further, a super thanks is always appreciated. Second thing, a quick shout out to my sponsor, NiceHash. NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace. What that means for you guys is you can now rent out your computer's unused and idle power online to people who mine various cryptocurrencies and you get paid for that power in Bitcoin. Uh, it's a great way to make some money on the side with no work. It's a one-stop shop for all things crypto. You can check them out here or I'll fill you in a little more at the end of the video. So now let's get into the project. So this is the laptop we're gonna be using today. It's not turning on. I hit the power button. Uh, you may see some LEDs come on, you may see some lights, but you're not seeing anything display on the screen. Um, the hard drive or fan sounds, either you don't hear them or you hear them very quickly and they shut right off. So basically, the computer's not turning on. If you are seeing anything on the screen or if you do hear the hard drive or fan sounds and they stay on, most likely this series of tests I'm going to show you is not what you need because your computer may actually be turning on. Um, leave me a comment down below with what you're actually seeing and I'll direct you to the right video. But now let's take you through the first test. I'm going to have you run to see if we can get this thing started. Okay, so here's the computer not turning on. The first thing I'm going to have you do, guys, is just press and hold your power button down for up to one minute. Sometimes it's simply a communication issue. Uh, so before you try anything more severe, just press and hold that power button down for one whole minute. If that doesn't solve your issue, now I'm going to have you move on to step two. We're going to unplug your charger, flip your computer over, and if you can, remove your battery. If you can remove your battery, that's the better thing to do here. It, it's a better way to perform this test. If you can't remove your battery, you can try doing this test without removing your battery. Um, for a lot of you, it still may work. If you do want to do this test the right way and your battery is internal and you can't get at it that easy, uh, there'll be a description or there'll be, I'm sorry, there'll be a video in the description below um, on how to access an internal battery or if you want step-by-step -step instructions for your computer, leave me a comment with your brand and model and I can try to help you get into your specific computer. But after you've removed the battery, after you've unplugged your charger, I'm gonna flip your computer back over and you're gonna press and hold that power button again for one minute. So press and hold that for one minute. A lot of times what happens is power will build up in various components in your computer that shouldn't build up there. And that can interfere with the way it works, even it turning on. So hopefully by doing this, we're draining the power from those components that should not have a power build up. After you're done holding that down, you can put your battery back in, plug your charger back in, and you can try turning on your computer. Again, if that works for you, leave me a comment, let me know. If not, we're gonna keep pressing on ahead. If that doesn't get your computer turned on, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna remove the charger again, remove the battery again. We're gonna press and hold for another minute. And now we're just gonna put one item back. We're gonna plug in your charger, but we're gonna leave your battery out. Try starting your computer. If your computer starts up, then great. What you've done is you've identified a bad battery as the thing that's making your computer not turn on. I would, at that point, replace it. If you want any help finding the right battery for your computer, let me know. Again, leave me your brand and your model number. I can help you out. Uh, if that doesn't help your computer turn on, then we're going to unplug your charger, press and hold the power button for another minute. And now we're going to put your battery back in. And we're going to leave the charger out. So we're going to kind of swap them and try the other one now. Try turning your computer on. Same thing as before, if your computer turns on, you've identified your power adapter as most likely faulty. Um, I would at this point replace your power adapter. Uh, your battery's probably good. One thing also to note, guys, if these things are not helping your computer, try doing them a couple times. Uh, try holding on the power button 
for one minute, try that repeatedly. Try taking your battery and charge up. Try this process a couple times. Um, some of you may need that to fully drain the power. Now if this first series of tests fix your issue, uh, but you find you have to do this every time you start your computer, um, that shows a problem. If it's only a one-time thing, then it's usually not a big deal, these things happen. But if it's over and over again, and every time you start your computer you have to do this power drain, then there's a problem. Uh, I would suggest first, make sure you're plugging your computer into a surge protector, not directly into the wall. Uh, make sure it's a good surge protector. You also don't want to use your computer always plugged in. Uh, a battery needs to charge and discharge regularly to stay healthy. Uh, so you don't want to hurt your battery that way. Also, try to limit the sources of static and things you use your computer around. Try not to use it in bed. Try not to let your cat sleep on it. Um, all these things can, can aid in, in that power buildup and, and that's not good for your computer. Next quick test I'm going to have you try involves your RAM. So again, we're going to flip your computer over, access the RAM. If you have an easy access panel like me, you'll be able to get at your RAM relatively easily. Just like the battery, if your RAM is not easily accessible and you have to really get into the computer, really start taking off some panels, um, leave me a message with your brand, your model number, and I can help you access your RAM. All right, so before getting into my computer, the first thing I'm going to do is remove my battery. Make sure your, uh, your cable's unplugged. We want as little power running through this computer as possible when you open it. Um, if your battery is internal, you want to take that out first thing when you get into your computer. I'm just going to go around now and remove the screws to my panel. So here are two RAM ports right there. So most of you will see something like this. You'll have two RAM ports. Some may only have one. Um, basically what we're going to do here guys is test for either a bad stick of RAM, a loose stick of RAM, or even a bad port. So the first thing you want to do is take both of your RAM sticks out, give the RAM ports a good blow, blow on them, um, make sure it's clean, and put your RAM sticks back in, try starting your computer. The way that RAM sticks usually set in, there are two metal arms on either side, they're held together by springs, so when you push those metal arms away, the RAM will release, like that. And then you just slide the RAM out. It's got a long port, short port. Um, that's how it goes in there. You can't put it in uh, backwards. It has to go in the right way. So that's how you take your RAM out. Again, take both your RAM out, put them back in, try starting your computer. If your computer starts, it could have just been loose. It, it happens. Um, if your computer doesn't start, we're, we're gonna test for each RAM stick now. So take one of your RAM sticks, put it into one of the ports, snap it in correctly, make sure that it's secure, try turning on your computer. If your computer works, you've identified the other RAM stick is bad. If your computer doesn't work, we're gonna switch ports. We're gonna take it out, put it in this port, try starting your computer. If your computer does not start, then we'll take this RAM stick out and then put your second RAM stick. Again, I, I only had one, but you'd want your second RAM stick. Try that in both ports. See if it works. Try turning it on in, in both ports. If you only have one stick like I do, um, you can try just reseeding it. You can try unplugging it, plugging it back, trying the computer, and then moving it from one port to the next. That, that can test for that but you need another good stick to test it if, if this is good. If this RAM's bad, you won't know. Um, you need a, another stick of RAM. There'll be a video link below in the description on how to purchase the correct compatible RAM for your computer if you don't know how. For those of you that found out it was your RAM, great. Leave me a message again so I can keep track of which ones have which problems. Um, if you have to replace your RAM, not a big deal. RAM's not the most expensive fix, and as long as you need to replace it, may as well upgrade. RAM's a big component in the overall speed factor of your computer, so why not replace it, upgrade it as well. The last simple test I'm gonna show you in this video is how to do a BIOS reset, a manual BIOS reset on your motherboard by temporarily removing your CMOS battery, and I'll show you that now. So this is your CMOS battery. It's a little round component here. It looks like a watch battery inside. It's wrapped in black electrical tape, and it plugs into a port. Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. So all you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. 
a little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. So that's a BIOS reset. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in, and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're going to want to push this battery back and up. Be very careful though, because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off, then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up, like that. And it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down in, in, into place. So those are the three tests I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, holding down your power button at various times, testing for the battery, the power adapter, uh, checking your RAM, and then ultimately the CMOS battery uh, reseat or, or the BIOS reset. In my shop, I find those three account for a large percentage of computers that won't turn on or look like they have no power. If you guys are still not able to turn your computer on after this, if nothing's changed, it's probably something a little more complicated, a little more heavy. I'll show you those in the next video. You're probably looking at a motherboard issue, maybe a faulty component issue that we have to identify separate from your motherboard, maybe even a power jack issue, but something else is going on that's not easily diagnosed like this. If this did help you guys out, please again like, share, subscribe. Super thanks are always welcome. And as mentioned earlier, a few extra words now on my sponsor, NiceHash. So as mentioned before guys, NiceHash is the world's largest hash power marketplace and what that means again for you is you can take your computer's idle, unused power, rent it out online to crypto miners and you get paid for that in Bitcoin. It's a great way to make money with no work. It's a great way to start investigating the world of crypto with no real investment. You already own the computer. It's not like you're going out to buy special equipment to do this. Um, and it's a great way to learn that world. They have several options. You can use their easy miner for some quick mining yourself, uh, or you can again, rent out your power to others. So it's a really fun thing to do. Check out this link for more information. Leave me a question if you have it. Any questions or comments on anything, leave it for me below. I do try to get back to you guys a couple times a day at least. Uh, thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.